Hey, it's Adam with Tech Dive AV Club, and we're in Vegas Pro 17, and I wanted to talk about this little meme I made. So it got a lot of attention on uh, the Zelda subreddit, because because it's a lot of fun, and somebody else had this idea, I just brought it to fruition, and I thought it'd be a great little tutorial just to kind of give a talk about what some overlaying effects look like and how they work. So first off, there's a uh, little... There's a little thing where James Bond is walking in the beginning of the movie. I've actually not seen this James Bond movie, but another Redditor pointed out that uh, he walks by this little pinwheel, and this pinwheel looks just like a pinwheel in one of the games, and that thought it would be fun if a Korok popped out, which is what happens when you, uh, that action happens in the game. When you walk past a little pinwheel, a Korok puzzle pops up, in this case balloons, and Link would shoot the balloons, the character in a video game, and then he would be rewarded and a Korok would pop up. So for this to work, he's got to approach the scene, and there has to be a moment where it seems like he finds the Korok and interacts with it in some way for it to be any fun. So to do that, there's a moment here where he's just repositioning his gun and, you know, just kind of holding it as he jumps. He's he's pulling it up and, and moving it around. And, and then that's when he crosses the pinwheel. So I decided that I was going to have him shoot the balloons there so the balloons would come up from off screen. And then he would... There's a moment where his gun hits full inertia over there, so I just kind of drew a straight line to where the balloon would be. Uh, that straight line is an imaginary straight line to where the balloon would be in front of him through that diagonal straight line that you can kind of infer. And then there's another point where it hits its full moment of inertia, about right there in, in mid-jump. So here, this kind of straight line here to a balloon is where I thought another one should be. Then it falls straight down. So here... I had to actually get a crop of the balloons. So that's the balloons. We'll talk about how I got them on the screen in a second. So for the balloons to appear, I actually grabbed them from just some gameplay footage on YouTube. Again, something else I don't own because I'm a thief. And here, if we take off, I can show you the different effects. This is where Vegas comes in handy here. Take off the color grading, the Bezier masking, the picture-in-picture -picture effect. You really just have uh, a screen here of a Korok balloon. First off, I have a mask, and I have two masks on it, all within the same Bezier masking effect. So if you look in edit mode, this first mask is just a cutout, simple cutout. There's a whole tutorial I have on that where I just cut out around the balloon pretty close to it. A touch of feather, barely any, just to kind of forgive my mistakes a little bit, but not enough to even notice the feather. And then uh, that's the first mask. But the second mask is actually interesting because there's actually a, a swirling little helicopter top right there. And uh, that's got a lot of motion blur and things. That would be a nightmare to mask. So really what I did was a second mask on this Bezier masking, which this mask is just an oval on top. You can see it come and go right there. And that oval is uh, really feathered. So that way uh, there's a, you can see through to the background, but the background's very nondescript behind it. And uh, you can see the feathers moving. So that kind of blur just matches the motion blur. That's a bit of a cheat, but that's what I did. Then when I color graded it, I really just added yellow. So if you go to the color grading panel here, uh, this is a very yellow color graded thing. Look at those greenery plants and the dust and the stone. It's all very yellow looking. It's to make it dry and arid feeling. So this very green video game needed a bit of yellow added to it. So I just went to the offset here and very, very gently tugged it towards the yellow and orange. And it seems to fit a lot better. May could have done a better job with that. I did motion tracking on the first mask right here in this uh, tracking. I just uh, set up some basic motion tracking and started it. And Vegas did a pretty good job of just tracking the shape of the balloon as it moved around. So as the balloon hovers, I was able to pull with it its natural kind of hovering move around effect. And um, it's in the wrong space right now because I also added the picture in picture effect. That's just a great way to move stuff around a frame in Vegas. It's an awesome way to do it. You just can move it, rotate it, or whatever. I'm going to hit Control Z and Control Z again. There we go. Now it's back where it's supposed to be. But the picture in picture effect mixed with the Bezier masking means it hovers and rotates in place where I want it to. So now if we arrow through, we can see that they're hovering and rotating. I have two of them, and I have them in the right spots that we talked about earlier, and now they explode. Really, the animation that I did, masking just ends right there, and then I start another mask of this right here. So if we take a look at what the explosion looks like, this is 
uh, some video footage I grab where somebody's going around grabbing Koroks, and uh, they do it in front of this white sky. It's got a very bland background, but there's the explosion. So I really just grab that explosion off YouTube real quick, and um, then I mask it a little bit with a faded mask, and then I add a chroma key to get rid of the white, and that kind of chroma keying white's uh, not something you're really supposed to do because it kind of makes these little balloon pieces see through but that's okay for our effect I knew that that uh, the just the essence of the balloon flipping around the motion blur and everything that would feel like it was popping so I wasn't too worried about having a hard line on those balloon pieces especially because who's to say they're not semi-transparent anyway so I let that lean in my advantage and got chroma keyed out the white and then next to picture in picture just positions it where I want it to go and then I just duplicate that just like I did with the balloons I duplicated it to happen as soon as the popping animation happened the gunshot was pretty simple it's just a gunshot sound effect added uh, where the sound effect goes boom and it's an echoey one uh, I grabbed this from YouTube audio library I got an echoey one because he's on a building top outside a little bit away from the camera so I felt like this kind of fit got that bond boom sound kind of matched uh, the subject matter here so that sound effect actually happens like a frame sooner than it's supposed to. Uh, I really just kind of do with feeling on sound effect matching. So I want it to really happen instantaneously, but uh, you hear, you see what you hear. And so uh, when I kind of lead with the sound effect, it cheats and it makes you feel like you expect to see what's happening. So this is definitely a cheat and what's going on. Uh, I, I really always play sound effects based more off feeling than actually where they're supposed to be in real time because uh, I'm trying to trick you. I'm trying to trick you that he shoots the gun. So the explosion, I don't mind that it happens a little off kilter. I just duplicated that gunshot and again matched it up to feeling. This one's a little bit more on frame, uh, but I, you could argue that I could have tightened that up a little bit, but I was actually trying to rush, so that's my excuse. So right here when he shoots the gun, you can also see a little bit of a muzzle blast because originally when I get rid of it, I can mute that track there and you can see without it, yeah, there's a little bit of a shot, but that doesn't really feel like he's shooting, especially because he's not got kickback or anything. So to add some sort of a feeling that he's shooting something here, uh, I added in some white around it. So what I could have done is gone to my effects software and gotten a muzzle blast and actually map the muzzle blast and cone shape to it as it moved and that would have been crazy and fun but the reality is, is this shot in like really bright daylight right so the muzzle blast actually in wouldn't be pronounced so as long as there's some sort of a flash as if the camera exposure got challenged in this one little area for a split second that's all your eye needs it's just a frame of the exposure changing in that one second so the way to do that is I actually just got this uh, white solid color media generator. It's just it's just like putting a white background, and then uh, this is just a lot of fun, simple, easy to do. Uh, I just moved it to one frame, the frame I needed it right on the gunshot, and uh, I added a cookie cutter effect, which you can see here with the cookie cutter effect. If I add a border, I just feathered it. See, you can see the feather. So I create just a little bit of a circle, circular blast of white and I just kind of center it right there on the muzzle with this picture in picture track that lets me kind of move that little white blur I made around and if I put it kind of in front of the muzzle there then it kind of gives the effect that there's been a flash from the gun especially because it's only a frame and it's mostly transparent and I made that transparent right here see this is if it wasn't transparent, but I want it to be transparent. It only just needs to have the vaguest, the vaguest of flashing to, to really sell the effect. And where it is, uh, you can actually see on this one, there's a moment where the muzzle blast is actually behind the shrapnel, uh, and that's one of the things that sells it. The reason it's behind it is because uh, I just, where it is in the layering, I put it underneath it. So that shows up on top, which is how it should in the real world anyway. So that kind of takes care of itself. And then I did have to, that last little piece, the camera moves the most significantly there. So I kind of got away with the natural hovering mechanic of these things, uh, where they are. I didn't really track them with bond, but here 
I do have to track the shrapnel a little bit and move it further away to keep the same spot because, and that's manually done, I just manually moved it around the screen the same way I've been moving things around the screen, uh, because the camera moves significantly there, so I kind of just, I didn't worry too much about it because if it's catching wind and things, it wouldn't stay exactly positioned anyway. There's a small little popping sound that There's a small popping sound that comes with the gameplay footage, and I just left that in there a little bit just to give that subtle reminder to someone who's familiar to it about how it would sound. Also, uh, I I left in the Korok sound of the balloons hovering and rising. I left that in as well uh, when it first starts here. So there's a few instances of the balloon hovering. Uh, I tried not to duplicate it more than I needed to, but it's it's really down and dirty mix uh, where it overlaps a little bit. The idea is it sounds so messy that I could get away with it, and it happens so fast. Uh, really, normally these kinds of effects would take a lot more sound mixing, but I was able to just kind of drag and drop them and let your senses do the rest. The next thing that happens is there is a Korok that appears, and this is a lot of fun. So this Korok appearing... Um, this is actually something that I have available on my channel. It's a Korok that I blue screened already. It took four hours of masking to blue screen this Korok. I did that in Vegas too, but that was already done. So uh, the next thing I did was I took it and I chroma keyed it, and then I color graded it to kind of match the yellowish environment. Really, ideally, the smoke could have been have a second mask applied to it and I could have color graded the smoke separately than the Korok and that would have been better and I could have also made the smoke somewhat see-through so it would fit with the environment a little better but I was on it just trying to get this thing out. I had to manually place the Korok on the keyframe and uh, as it moves through the scene and so he actually gets smaller uh, as as it goes away and stays on that thing and he jumps oopsie control Z there stays on that thing and jumps so as as that happens really what I did is I picked a place where the Korok would be standing and then I just eyeball lined it up I just went frame by frame and lined it up and let Vegas make keyframes I just selected this animate thing and it created keyframes every time I made a change uh, the location was simple I just started the size he needed to be I made him just his legs reach a little smaller than the width of this little chimney pipe and then uh, at the end of it I left his legs just a little smaller than the width of the chimney pipe so uh, the size wise that works and then I also just made sure that the his his left leg the right leg that we see but his left leg stands kind of just about to the just to the left of the pipe so every single thing i lined it up to where as you can see i wanted to make sure that his foot stays just about in that same spot that just took some trial and error from manual masking but now since he gets smaller and stays in the same spot and the camera angle doesn't change drastically it gives the illusion that the korok is actually in that place in the photo so it's not perfect but that is a little down and dirty meme I made in about two hours and I was able to do that because one this Korok was pre-made uh, and that would have been the super time-consuming part and two uh, because Vegas is so smooth and simple oh oh yes and I wanted the balloons to rise up so I just used that same picture and picture pack I talked earlier and I made them see-through and I just took the same balloon animation I copied it and I moved it uh, see-through I just kind of keyframe them up into position uh, real fast so it's just a little blur to your eye ideally I would have added motion blur to this not just making them see through but again with the time constraints I knew this two frame piece here wouldn't actually affect the piece unless you were arrowing through if you're arrowing through you can notice the issue but uh, if you're watching it you can't see there's a natural motion blur since it's so fast that it happens so that is an explanation of James Bond shooting the Korok meme. So thank you guys for watching. I have more tutorials like this, but also more targeted tutorials and reviews about Vegas creative software and editing and video production. So thank you for watching. Check out my more tutorials, my Udemy course, all that jazz. Anything you buy through my affiliate links helps me out a ton. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.